My name is Michael Summers. We in the Ireland US Council, we couldn't sustain our activity without, without the help of our great sponsors. And we have tonight uh, excellent sponsors. Um, we have Erlingus, who have been sponsoring us for many years, the Dublin Airport Authority, and Alltech. And we greatly appreciate their splendid support of this evening's event. Uh, now, I want to introduce the first of these. Uh, and would you please welcome our good friend, Kevin Tolan, who's the CEO of the Dublin Airport Authority. It's an honour for me to be asked to introduce and welcome our guest speaker this evening, Ambassador Kevin F. O'Malley, who was sworn in as EU Ambassador to Ireland this past September. Ambassador O'Malley is an attorney and was a partner at a law firm in St. Louis, Missouri. He's been an adjunct professor both of Washington University School of Law and St. Louis University School of Law. He is known as a talented leader, an expert manager, and a forthright public speaker. He's been consistently chosen by the editors of the publication, The Best Lawyers in America, for his work in medical negligence defense and white collar criminal defense. Before entering private practice, Ambassador O'Malley was an assistant United States attorney in St. Louis, Missouri, and a special attorney of the organized crime section of the United States Department of Justice in Washington, DC, Los Angeles, California, and Phoenix, Arizona. He has also served as an officer in the United States Army Reserve. Ambassador O'Malley graduated from St. Louis University where he served on the editorial board of its law journal. He has strong Irish roots. His paternal grandparents emigrated from Westport in County Mayo about 100 years ago. We're delighted that he's agreed to join us this evening. It's a distinct honor and a high privilege for me to ask you to join me in welcoming Ambassador Kevin O'Malley. Good evening. Uh, shortly after the um, Ireland U.S. Council was formed uh, in order to um, prepare for the arrival of President John Kennedy uh, for his uh, only trip to Ireland uh, as president, uh, and shortly after that historic um, trip uh, that President Kennedy made here to Ireland in June of 1963, uh, President Kennedy was seated at the White House um, in the residence uh, section of the White House, not far from where I was sworn in. And he was having uh, a Jameson with his uh, friend David Powers. And Powers was a, uh, a, a, a close personal friend and was able to talk to the President in ways that, um, that many people couldn't. And Powers, uh, that particular night, they were talking about the future and Powers asked President Kennedy uh, who did he think uh, would be his successor uh, after his terms in office had concluded. And Kennedy um, gave the typical um, uh, Democratic names at the time, Johnson and Humphrey and Mondale and others. And um, Powers, uh, feeling his Jameson a little bit, uh, was then pushed Kennedy uh, further and said, well, okay, Fine, uh, Mr. President, that's uh, who you think, but who are you going to endorse? Who will you, President John Kennedy, endorse to be your successor? Um, and the uh, President tried to avoid answering the question, but Powers pushed him a little bit further, and eventually uh, President Kennedy said, I intend to support that Democrat for President of the United States who promises to name me as the United States Ambassador to Ireland. <laughs> so that is, that is the job uh, that I was lucky enough, uh, uh, lucky enough to get. And I walk into this job um, very happily. Uh, about 100 years ago, as you, you heard, uh, my grandparents, uh, Michael and Elizabeth O'Malley, got on a boat. Um, they were penniless, uh, but not uh, hopeless. They were tearful, but not uh, fearful. They were um, uneducated, but not, uh, but not uh, unambitious. They didn't have any money. They didn't have any education. They did have seven children. Uh, and they got on a boat and came to the United States. There they proceeded to have uh, eight more children. Uh, my father was the first born in the United States. And, um, 
my father arrived in uh, it, what you call secondary education, what we call high school, uh, just in time for the arrival of the Great Depression. The stock market crashed uh, in October of 1929, leading the United States into the worst economic catastrophe um, uh, in its existence. And that was my father's last day of school. Uh, it was the last day of school for all of the O'Malley's in Chicago, Illinois. They all had to quit, not just because they couldn't pay the tuition, because they couldn't, uh, but they also had to do whatever they could to earn some money to keep a large immigrant family uh, together uh, in Chicago, Illinois. And so, um, as it happens, uh, I, I returned uh, two generations later uh, as the ambassador. And uh, I presented my credentials to uh, President Higgins um, the day after I arrived. And as I stood um, at his home, looking across the street to my new home, um, all I could do was see the faces of my grandparents uh, and my parents, thinking uh, what a wonderful country uh, I come from. What a wonderful country that I, I come from and what great stock I came from um, to be able to be in that position. Um, there have been days um, before I arrived where I thought that the world wasn't treating Kevin O'Malley in the, to the extent that I thought Kevin O'Malley should be treated. And uh, I have to admit that thinking of my grandparents and how courageous they must have been, how courageous they must have been to have gotten on that boat uh, to come to a place where they didn't know anybody uh, and, and uh, all they had was courage. And uh, I am clearly the beneficiary of that. So, um, you know, in this very hotel, ironically, uh, on Thanksgiving morning, just a, our Thanksgiving holiday a few weeks ago, um, I was having a Thanksgiving lunch with the Taoiseach. And I had just learned um, a few hours earlier that our first grandchild, uh, the great-great-grandchild of Elizabeth and Michael O'Malley was born in the United States. And, um, and I am sitting there with the Taoiseach uh, here in Dublin uh, with the new grand, uh, first grandchild born in the United States. So such is the, the globally shrinking world that we live in, um, such is the world that um, where so many things can happen uh, for so many different reasons and which gives so many of us so much optimism. So since I've arrived here, I have uh, I've learned to adopt tea instead of coffee. I'm I'm adopting that habit, and I'm and I'm staying on the left side of the road, not the right side of the road. Uh, but I have not yet adopted the habit of long speeches after dark. Uh, so uh, let me just say a couple of things uh, that uh, that I think are uh, significant to what we're going to try to do uh, in the coming years, and then uh, let you go on to hopefully get ready for Christmas. Uh, when I, when I talked to President Obama about this job, I told him that there were three things that I thought that we, we needed to do. One, uh, and that's what we'll talk about tonight. The th first thing was to improve, if at all possible, the business relationship between the United States and Ireland. It is a very, very good relationship, and no one would ever deny that. The, the numbers are staggering. You know, $38 billion of trade last year, $270 billion of trade and investment, Ireland being the seventh largest source of uh, direct foreign investment in the United States. Um, all of those things are absolutely, absolutely wonderful and, and in some ways absolutely breathtaking um, you know, that the, the investment that United States companies has made here in Ireland because of the quality of the worker and the quality of the companies that are here. Uh, and, and you know the reasons, you've heard them a, a million times, you know, English speaking, well-educated, dedicated workforce, competitive tax rate, transparent legal system, all of those things that, uh, that support uh, investment in the, in the United, support United States investment here. Uh, but the biggest reason, I think, is that we just simply get one another. Um, the Irish seem to understand uh, the United States like no other country. And I know that the United States understands Ireland like, like no other country. And I'd like to return to that point in, in just a second. 
The second priority that I mentioned to President Obama and that we agreed upon was to do whatever it is that we could to ensure a just and permanent peace in the North. And those talks are going on now. Uh, they require um, a great deal of patience, um, a great deal of deliberation, a great deal of insight, uh, a tremendous amount of foresight, and a minimal amount of hindsight. Um, and we're, we're doing, we recognize our role um, in, these, in these talks, and we will continue to do what, um, what we can. And probably that is all that needs to be said or should be said on that. The third of the three priorities that I spoke to the President about and that we agreed upon uh, was to ensure that the special bond, this very unique bond that exists between the United States and Ireland, that is unique, to, unique in all the world, that we pass that down, that we make sure we pass that down, that we guarantee that we pass that down to the next generation. Uh, it is not guaranteed it is not guaranteed that this relationship will continue. Uh, the face of Ireland is changing. You know, it's, Ireland has 30% of your population is under 26. One in six Irish are born outside of Ireland, in Asia, in the Middle East, in Africa. Uh, you know about our immigration issues. We have 11 million undocumented people traveling in the United States right now. Uh, those people in the United States and those people in Ireland will change the way we look. And I don't think we can count on the, uh, the shared bloodlines that exist between us now to carry us through into the future generations. Um, the fact that we get one another so well uh, that there is no translation necessary. Uh, even in un other English-speaking countries in the United States, we sometimes need translation um, to, to get our ideas across. That doesn't happen in Ireland for the United States. And I don't think it happens in the United States for Irish. Um, the fact that we get one another has a lot to do with these shared bloodlines. So what we're going to try to do in the coming years, uh, we have a, a series which I do hope you'll support, and I do hope you'll follow. We, we're going to call it the Creative Mind Series. And we're going to try to connect young people. Uh, and the language that young people speak uh, is perhaps not the language that we speak, but they speak technology. They speak entrepreneurship. They speak music. And we're going to try to connect uh, the young Irish with the young Americans using the vehicles of music, culture, um, technology uh, to, to make sure that uh, the Irish know that they have no better friend in the world than the United States and that the same is true of the, of the young Americans, that they know that their best friend in the world uh, is here in Ireland. Um, I don't think we can, I don't think we can uh, expect that to happen uh, unless we work at it and that's what we're going to do. You'll hear about that from me and others in the future. I do hope you'll support us. Let me say two, two other things. Every place I go, I'm asked two questions and so let me at least, so, so that you don't accuse me of, uh, of dodging them, let me say, let me talk about them for a second. Uh, first is um, uh, immigration. Okay. President Obama took very courageous steps uh, recently to begin to untangle uh, a very difficult problem that we face in the United States of, uh, of, uh, of illegal and undocumented aliens. It's a big problem for us and you understand that. But let me say here, and, and I hope that you'll take my word for it, nobody knows, nobody knows where that's going to end. Okay? President Obama laid out a very courageous framework of what he would like to see accomplished within his presidential authority. But nobody knows, even under that presidential authority, the details of that immigration policy. And anybody who tells you that they, that they do know that uh, is not being square with you. Those details are being worked out now. They're very complex. They're very difficult. Uh, I, I, I'm, I hope that they, they, they turn out the way that we all want them to turn out, but nobody knows that. And we also have other legislative uh, issues and judicial issues that have to be considered in this. So uh, a, a big first step was taken. Uh, I applaud the president for, for doing that. 
but nobody knows exactly where that's going to go. The second thing, my favorite topic is taxation. Um, the, um, the United States um, supports a tax policy uh, which is fair, in which uh, real, the creation of real jobs for real people, uh, creating a real prosperity which is shared, uh, is a good thing. Um, every moment that I spend trying to promote um, United States Irish investment that I'm speaking about taxation, I am speaking about the wrong thing. Um, I, I, hope that I, I hope that we don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Obviously, the, the tax rules have to be examined. Uh, we live in a totally different world than, than we did 10 years ago as far as global companies, as far as shifting things back and forth. And so I think everyone is on the same page trying to work through that. And, and I, hope that, I hope that we get there, and I hope that we get there soon. So uh, in conclusion, uh, let me, let me say that, uh, you know, the famous words of, uh, of, of Joyce that uh, the Atlantic Ocean was a, uh, a bowl of bitter tears. And I think, that's, uh, I think that my grandparents um, contributed to that bowl of bitter tears uh, 100 years ago on their journey from, uh, from the west coast of Ireland to the United States. Uh, but right now, that, that is not a bitter a bowl of bitter tears. It is a crackling conduit of activity and of prosperity between two very good countries, two very strong countries, two countries that get one another. And I am so proud to be able to be here um, within, uh, be here as the ambassador, be here as part of, uh, of, of this wonderful shared prosperity. Um, I hope that you will um, uh, join us as we try to connect the young folks uh, here in Ireland and the, and the young folks in the United States. Um, I hope that you'll um, follow us as we're trying to make music and technology and entrepreneurship uh, the real bond um, that will hold uh, our two countries together after our time is here. I, I know that all of you cherish that relationship, uh, as do I, and I think we owe it to the next generation to be able to have them able to feel what we've felt and to, and to enjoy the prosperity that we've spent, that, that enjoy the prosperity that we have. And um, having said that, let me say um, I hope that you all have uh, a Merry Christmas. Um, th thank you very much for the invitation to speak here tonight. It was, um, I hope it wasn't too long. You're all standing. Um, I didn't see anybody leave yet. Um, so, um, you know, a Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and good things ahead. <laughs>